Hey everyone, Brian Lagunas here, and today I'm going to answer another tech question. If you have a tech question you like to have answered, make sure you subscribe to my channel, like this video, leave a comment below, and I may just answer your tech question in my next video. Today's question comes from an email I received just the other day. In this email, Alan writes, Hey Brian, I'm writing a Blazor application for the first time. I'm getting to use C Sharp and HTML to write a single page application in WebAssembly. No JavaScript. Sounds great, right? Well, the problem is, is because Blazor is so new, there aren't a lot of components or libraries or frameworks that I can use in my Blazor applications. However, if I'm writing web apps using React or Angular or Vue, I can use NPM to bring in all these great components and features and libraries to utilize in my web applications. So Brian, my question is, how do I use NPM or can I even use NPM in a Blazor application? Well, Alan, that is a great question. And luckily for you, I have an answer. Yes, you can in fact use NPM in your Blazor applications. It's actually quite simple. The tricky part comes is when you want to interact with those NPM packages without using C Sharp. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do just that. Are you ready? I am. Roll that intro. This application is a brand new Blazor WebAssembly application. So to get started using NPM in this application, let's go ahead and create a new folder that's going to hold all of our NPM packages. I'm gonna call this npm.js. Next, I'm going to open this folder in File Explorer. Now I'm going to launch a command prompt by typing CMD in the file browser URI box. Now that we have this, we need to initialize NPM in this folder. So I'm gonna say npm init-y What's going to happen is it's going to create a new file for us called package.json. If we look at here, we can see our package.json. And if we open up the solution explorer, we can see our package.json. Next, I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder. I'm going to call this source. And then I'm going to add a file. I'll just call this a class. It's not really a class. It's just a shortcut. But I'm going to say this is index.js. And we're going to delete all that C sharp code in there because this is a JavaScript file. Now that we have this, we want to open our command line one more time because we want to install some packages. Let's go npm install webpack and webpack CLI. We want these to be a developer dependency. Webpack is essentially a JavaScript bundler. It takes all the JavaScript that we write, it bundles it up into a nice minimized package that we can use in our application. Once webpack has been installed, let's open up our package.json and we want to add a build script. So I'm going to delete this test script under the scripts node. I'm going to create a build script. And this build script is going to be something like this. Webpack dot slash source slash index dot JS. This is going to be our source JavaScript file. Then we need to set the output path and the output path of this bundled file. We want to actually be in the WW root. This is where the code actually executes when we generate the application. So we want it to end up in this WW root. So we're going to use the dot dot slash to go back a directory, then WWW root slash, and we'll put it into a JS folder. Next, we're going to set the output file name to something like index.bundle.js. What this is going to do is when we run the Webpack build, it's going to take our index file and all the JavaScript in it. It's going to bundle it up and it's going to put it in a folder under our WW root called index.bundle.js. Next, let's go ahead and find a cool package on NPM that we can utilize. I am going to choose to use the Infragistics web component product. So if we go to infragistics.com, look at the web components. And specifically, if we scroll down to our components, Let's see, we have, how about the radial gauge? Radial gauge looks cool. What do we have to do to install the radial gauge? Well, it looks like we just have to do some NPM installs. So I'm gonna actually copy this. I'm gonna go back to my command line and I'm just gonna paste that in there. Now that we have our gauges installed, the next step is we have to register our module. So once again, I'm just going to copy and paste the code that it's giving me in the documentation. I'm going to open up my index.js and I'm going to paste that code in the index.js. 
Next, I'm going to scroll down and say, oh, okay, we need to add this to our markup and our Blazor application. So I'm going to copy the IGC radial gauge code snippet, and I'm going to open up our index.razor page. I will delete that line of code and I will paste in the code that we were given. Okay, everything looks good. Now, the next step is we have all our JavaScript. We, we've imported these NPM packages. Uh, next, we actually have to run the build script. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my command line. I'm gonna type NPM run build. It's going to take all the JavaScript that we have written and all the components we have installed. It's going to package it up and bundle it into a new JavaScript file. Now, remember that file, we told it to copy to a path of wwroot slash JS with the name index.bundle.js. So if we look at our wwroot, we can see that this file has been generated. Let's go ahead and open up our index.html. Now what we have to do is we have to add the script, our new bundled script to the index.html file. Now that we have that, let's go ahead and run the application and see what happens. And there we go. As you can see, we have successfully added a radio gauge component to our Blazor application via NPM packages. Pretty cool, right? Well, as you can see, using NPM in your Blazor application is really simple. It's not much to it. Uh, but what happens when you want to actually interact with that JavaScript component that you've added to your application? Obviously, we can't do this via C Sharp, so we have to use JavaScript. So let's, let's do an experiment. Let's go back to our index.razor and we're going to add a button here. And when we click this button, we want to update the value of our radial gauge. So we actually need to add a code segment here. And when we click this button, we want to invoke an on click method. Let's go ahead and define that here. Now, whenever we click the button, something's gonna happen and we're going to update that value. Now, in order to update this value, we need to use JavaScript. So let's start by giving our component an ID, because this is how we're going to access this element. And I'll just call this RG for radio gate. Next, let's go into our index.js, and we need to write a function. Now, when you're using JavaScript and Blazor, it's important that you define your functions off of the window object. So we'll call this function update value. And this is going to be a function that takes Maybe we can accept the value and we'll set the value to whatever parameter we pass in. Now let's get the radio gauge by getting the document. We'll get the element by ID and we gave it the ID of RG. Now, once we get the radio gauge, we can set the value equal to the value that we are passing into the function. Now let's go back to our index.razor. Now what we want to happen is when we click this button in Blazor, we want to execute code in our C sharp to interop with the JavaScript we have written in the index.js. To do that, we have to actually use JS interop. Let's start by injecting the ijs runtime into our Blazor file. And here we're gonna change this to an async void. We're going to await the js runtime dot invoke void async. This is going to be the name of our function that has been defined on the window, which is update value and then any parameters. In this case, we are passing a value parameter. Let's say we set it to 60. Well, let's go ahead and run the application and see what happens. Here's the application running. And as you can see, we actually have an error. So if we look at our console, we can see we have a number of bad things going on here. Well, what's the problem? Well, the problem is, is every time we make a change to our index.js file, we have to rerun the build to repackage our bundle. We could hop it back into our command line and rerun the NPM build script, or we could take a different approach. Let's go ahead and right click our project and say properties, and we're gonna to go to our build event. And in a pre-build event command line, we're gonna type NPM run build. This is going to be our build script. Let's go ahead and close that. But I don't wanna just run that script. Let's go ahead and edit this file or project file. And here's our command. First thing I want to do is I want to make sure our working directory is the npm JS directory. And before we run the build, I actually want to run another script. I want to run npm install. This is going to make sure that anytime we do a build, it's going to make sure all of our npm packages have been installed. Then it will run our build script. This is going to be very useful for when I take this and share it with somebody, they can just hit F5 and it's going to work. 
So now that we've updated our build process, I'm going to just hit the debug button here. And if we open up our output, we're going to see that our build process is actually going to call our NPM install, and then it's going to run our NPM build script, which you can see here, webpack source output, there it is. Now we just have to wait for this build to finish. It is completed. Now the application is running. Here's the application. Here's our new button. I'm going to click this button. And as you can see, the value has been updated. The needle now points to 60. So as you can see, it's very easy to use NPM in your Blazor application. And if you want to interact with any of those JavaScript components, you'll have to use JS interop via the Blazor JS runtime.